Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. My name is Chris Legaspi, and today we are going to continue the lessons from the Masters series. And in this episode, we are going to discuss and explore the skills related to value, value design, value control, value grouping, all things value. And we're going to look at three specific skills. There are many skills needed, or there are many ways to control and manipulate values to make pictures. And we're going to look at three specific skills. And we're going to look again at examples from three very uh, skillful and memorable masters. Two you may know of. One is actually a contemporary. He's still alive. Today we're going to explore limited values. And we're going to look at the great Caravaggio. We're going to look at the skill of dark mass, and the artist will be the great Dean of Illustration, Dean Cornwell. And finally, value shape design and abstract design. We're going to look at an American painter, contemporary, still alive, James Reynolds. And before we begin, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my free Insiders Club email list. So insiders get access to other free resources and downloads. Right now I have a free head drawing mini course. You can get an 18 page preview of my life drawing book. You can also get access to private discord community along with references, handouts, and a whole lot more. You can also get first access to any live classes and live streams like this. I will be doing a live class at the end of this month. So you definitely want to get your uh, early access and discount code. So all you got to do is go to www.drawwithchris.com and there you can enter your email and you will be good to go. So thank you for being here. And uh, before we begin, comment below, where are you located? Where are you watching from? And what time is it for you? I am currently in Thailand at the moment and it's Saturday morning for me. So this is Saturday morning cartoon for me. Thank you for being here wherever you are. Today, we're going to look at value skills. Value, obviously, kind of like shape. Really, every picture has shapes and values, and they are intimately related. Value is one of the absolute core building blocks of a two-dimensional thing, image. Any picture, image that you see, even the world around you, you see in value. So as artists, especially as realists, we need to understand how to control, manipulate, and design the values in our works to help us to communicate the picture. Whatever we want to communicate in our pictures, value is a big part of that. Now, the three skills we're going to look at today are limited values, dark mass, and shape design. Starting with limited values, some of the skills that are involved in limited values are grouping values. So it's another way to describe limited values. It's basically taking a complex range of values and simplifying them and grouping them into two to three values. So if you have a couple darks and one is slightly lighter than the other, one may be even darker than, than the other, the key to value grouping is to kind of lump them together, group them into one value shape and keep things very, very simple. And that is the key to limited values. It helps you to simplify your work. It helps you to simplify your design and simplify your shapes. One of the first artists in history to do this, to accomplish this, and to do this in a remarkable way, memorable way, is the great Caravaggio. We have an example here of one of his works, one of his most famous works, one of the most famous paintings in history, the uh, Doubting Thomas painting. And you can see it's essentially a very, very dark, it's a relatively dark scene, mostly darks, the background, the shadows of the figures. If you squint, you can see that the background and the shadows of the figures, they really kind of merge together into one dark mass. Even the face of the main character, the subject of this painting, one of the subjects, uh, Jesus figure here, even his face is in complete shadow. So although there are details there, if you really squint, it just kind of merges and groups with the dark background. That is value grouping right there. And you can see that clearly there's also a bright, bright, bright light. You can see it on the fabric of this figure on the left, the Jesus figure, the highlight on this head in the background. 
and then kind of everything else really is just one half tone. So the fabric on this man, the fabric on this figure, this figure's face in light, although it's very, very, it is in light, it's still quite dark. And this main character's hand, his skin is quite tan for some reason. The hand, the face, and the fabric really group together into one value shape, although they are, you know, three different objects or four different objects, different materials and slightly different color. It's generally mid-tone grouped into the mid-tone. So you have dark, mid-tone, and light, the classical three-value system, three-value pattern, three-value palette, if you will, and used to tremendous effect by Caravaggio here. And really, the thing that makes this unique for me when you simplify your values is you get incredible clarity, incredible clarity and simplicity. I believe that harmony comes from simplicity. So we all want harmony in our work. So generally, the more simple you make your work, the less stuff you put in and do and try, you generally can have a greater chance for clarity. And you can see here, because all of his values, especially the darks, are basically kind of lumped together, grouped together, they create this very punchy and strong and dramatic graphic read. And that's in my opinion, quite exciting. That's what makes Caravaggio famous. He was the first to do, or one of the first to, to really popularize this style. It's called chiaroscuro. Chiaroscuro is uh, Italian for from the darkness or light dark. That's what we have here. A light shined on a dark, dark room, a dark world. You can see the, the light. As the light gets moves away from the light, we get into a half tone, and then everything else, shadows and the background all group into a dark, dark mass. So that, that really creates a nice, strong, punchy graphic quality. The next value skill is dark mass. So if it's the first time you've heard that term, mass just means mass. It's a big shape, a big group, a big mass, a big area of something. Mass means a big, large area. And one of the ways that we can control our values and simplify their values is to mass the darks. Mass the darks. The darks are simplified and they're kind of connected. Every dark, dark shape, in a way, should touch, if possible, have something that, that bridges them together. And that is the dark mass strategy. And one of the greatest examples in history is the great Dean Cornwell. We've looked at him many times. I talk about him all the time. I can stare at his work all day long. I've studied Dean Cornwell basically every day for two years. It's quite a life-changing experience. Uh, his work is tremendously simple and clear, and he is the master or a master of dark mass. Dark mass, well, the first thing you need to do with dark mass is to simplify your values, sort of like limited values, right? Instead of having a whole range of darks, you kind of want to, you know, mm, just kind of group them together. And then uh, the dark mass gives you strong graphic read and almost an abstract read. So graphic read, abstract shape design, that's one of the benefits of simplifying your darks and massing them together. And of course, with good abstract design, we get punchy visual punch, visual attention. High contrast, dark and light graphic shapes get a lot of attention, especially if the shapes are designed well and they flow, they move the eye and they communicate something in the work, whether it be realism or they communicate a story. Here in this example by Dean Cornwell, you clearly see all the big giant dark mass. This painting is basically 60 to 75% black, really, if you think about it. And you can see there's some subtle nuances like the piano here, a little bit on the floor, maybe there's some dark blue color here, kind of a little bit dark hand of this figure, the hair, even the shadow is kind of not quite dark black, but it is in a way. That is incredible. That is value grouping. That is dark massing. Although there are differences, they're not different enough. If you squint, 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 squint down, they group together. And I would argue we want that, especially those of you who are leaning more towards the illustrative style work. 
and this is something that is very, very powerful in composition. Dean Cornwell learned this from the great Howard Pyle, who we talked about before. And Pyle is arguably one of the great geniuses of composition in history. So these two men knew what they were doing, and we should learn from this. And if you can see also, too, I want to point out, look at this female figure, right? We have this clear and obvious dark mass. And then there's a small dark mass of her hair, right? She has dark hair, but there's probably zero detail in her hair. It's just a dark graphic shape. Now, remember what I said, the darks should touch. All dark darks should touch if possible. And the question is, does Dean Cornwell unify this figure's hair with the dark mass? And yes, he does. He does it in two ways. Do you see it? Look at her shadow. Her shadow, although yes, it's not black, but again, if you squint, it groups nicely with her black dress. And look at the wall, the shadow on the wall. It's the exact same value. It's almost the exact same color as the shadow on her body. And again, it's not black. It's not as black as the piano. It's not as black as her dress, not as black as her hair. But boy, it is pretty, pretty dang dark. It is close. Look how close that area is if you squint, squint down. It groups into one beautiful dark mass. So that is the ticket, my friends. And we'll explore that in detail as well. It's a very important point in value composition, value control, is the ability to unify all of your dark shapes. And then finally, we're going to look at abstract shape design. So of course, we cannot discuss value unless we talk about shape. And we cannot discuss shape and composition unless we talk about abstract design, abstract patterns, basically patterns, patterns of flat shapes, abstract shapes, geometric shapes, whatever they may be. That is picture making. And of course, great realists understand that great realism comes from abstraction. Believe it or not, if it's the first time you're hearing that, it is quite mind bending, but, but stay with me. Uh, you, you'll after you listen to me for a while, you'll understand. And many of the great teachers understand this. So one of the great examples is James Reynolds. He's an American painter. He's still alive. I recently discovered him. And wow, he is an absolute master of everything that I like. <laughs> Limited values, graphic shapes, <laughs> simple values, dark massing, everything that I like to do. <laughs> he absolutely nails it. He is mostly known for his landscapes and Western art, and every landscape painter must, 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 must absolutely understand shape design, graphic design, abstract design when they're composing their landscapes. You don't just go into the forest and paint millions of leaves and millions of branches. No, you have to mass them together, design them so that you don't drive yourself crazy and you make a nice picture. So shape design, graphic design involves simplified values, abstract patterns, and also suggestion of detail because the great realists in history understand that you cannot absolutely sit there and describe every single hair, every single hair follicle, every single freckle, every single leaf, every single branch, every single crack in the sidewalk, every single blade of grass. No, of course, you have to suggest the details in our work. And again, that is part of being a good abstract designer is the ability to suggest detail when needed. So this example here by James Reynolds, clearly very simple values. If you squint at this, this painting is about 60% a black mass, a dark mass, about 30% light mass, the snow, obviously, and the sky and the snow in the background. And then about 10% of this mid-tone mass, which are the trees right here, the trees in light, the tree trunk here in light. So dark, mid-tone light. And you can see that if you squint, and uh, we're going to look at another example. If I were to make this small, maybe let's do that now. Okay, I just want to show this example of abstract design. The best way to do it is to look at a piece from far away, from 20 feet away, or as a thumbnail in your um, computer. And you could see, wow, look how the darks mass together. The darks, trees and leaves in the foreground. The shadow on the ground. The bush or shadow in the foreground here. The dark trees in the background. This green tree, muted green tree on the left. Although it, it does have some halftone notes in it, but it does lump or group nicely together. Again, so not another example of what we just saw, dark massing. <laughs> 
So you, you can see what, where I'm going here. Look at the lights. The lights are fairly, fairly close together. The bright of the snow in the foreground, even the blue sky, the bright blue sky is very, 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 very bright. Don't be fooled. Just because it's blue doesn't mean it's a mid-tone. It is very bright. And you could see that all he really did, when I look at this, I just see a big abstract mass of dark and light. I see a triangular mass here in the foreground, triangular light mass up, up top here, and a big dark mass in the middle. So to me, it's an abstract painting. But all he, do, he does two things to make it a realist landscape. Do you see it? Number one, he draws shapes of trees, long rectangles. So he basically put on long rectangles, which in essence, they're still an abstract shape. A rectangle is an abstract shape, is a geometric shape. But he just kind of, okay, well, it, it's brown, it's long, it has some bushy looking things. So your mind draws a tree. What he's doing here, he's making us draw a tree. This is not a tree. This, in reality, is a brown, is a medium brown rectangle surrounded by a dark mass. That's all it is. And he puts two, he puts three, and he kind of puts one over here. And then you see two or three grouped together. Your mind draws trees, not him. <laughs> so, and he suggests detail. Look at the little flickers of brushwork, right? The trees have sharp brushwork. And then the little flicker of slightly textured brushwork suggest leaves. So he's suggesting thousands and thousands and thousands of leaves with just maybe a handful of brush strokes. That, my friends, is how you paint realism. Believe it or not, <laughs> realism isn't spending 200 hours painting every leaf that you see, 200 hours painting every hair follicle, every strand of hair, every follicle or pimple or freckle that you see. No, it is crafting an illusion using abstract shapes and suggestion of detail. So wonderful, wonderful example by James Reynolds here. All right, thank you <laughs> for being here. I know some of you might be watching this. You might be like, wait a minute. I thought we were going to talk about realistic drawing stuff. What is this abstract nonsense? What are you talking about? Just stay with me. I know. I know. If it's the first time hearing that, it might be confusing. Our first value skill we're going to explore is limited values. We're going to look at the great Caravaggio. And here we have one of his most famous works. And this is a glorious piece of tonal composition of value control. And value grouping is one of the most important skills. You can see the dark mass, it's obvious. And what I like is that in chiaroscuro, you basically ignore the shadow in a way. You don't put any detail. The shadow is sort of this mysterious black shape thing, and it melds into the background. Notice how the background is also equally dark as the shadow itself. So that's chiaroscuro. That is clear and obvious. Let's look at lights. What is the lightest thing? It's clearly this man's cloth and this white cloth here. And that is not an accident. That was consciously designed. Compositionally, I'm not quite sure why that's there, but something in the middle does attract a lot of attention. Your eye normally goes there. So most likely, at the very least, this is a compositional device to pull the focus away, which is something that I love. Whenever you pull focus away from a face, it creates tremendous tension and drama in your composition. So that's clearly light. And then really everything else is very, very close in value in the mid-tones. The skin of this character, the fabric of this character, the skin, the skin, the fabric here of this character, this character's legs, even this cloth, it's quite dark compared to the skin, but not too much darker than the dark part of the skin. So in a way, there's a bit of a gradation as well here from the hand to the skin. So the skin, at least the central figure, is very close to a light, very close to a light. But when I squint, it's still quite, quite dark. So I would group it in the midtones. So let's quickly do a little study. So what I'm going to do is a very, very abstract shape study. I'm just going to look at the value shapes and not the detail. Well, at least I'll try my best to ignore the detail. 
So there's some glorious detail here. I just want to examine his value grouping and see if I can get a read. So I will try to limit the values that I have based on what I see, and then we'll see if we also get a read with my study here. Oop, I just said I wouldn't do detail. <laughs> so tempting. Oh, detail is so tempting, isn't it? What I'm going to do is uh, just kind of block in the lights first. I need to see my line drawing. Actually, it doesn't make sense until I do the darks. Let me do that first. Okay, I'm doing the darks now, and I'm using 50% opacity just so I can continue to see my drawing, my line drawing anyway. Yeah, I'm going to be trying to be careful not to too into the detail. I just want to keep it very abstract for now. So comment below if you have ever seen a Caravaggio in person. I don't think I have, actually. It's kind of sad. I've never been to Europe, actually. Amer I grew up in America, and I didn't. I don't remember uh, seeing Caravaggio's at a museum. It must be uh, outstanding in person. And every great designer understands that they have to merge and link their darks, unify the darks. Caravaggio understood that, of course. Shape here.
Okay, now I'm just going to block in the midtone, and then we'll see if we get a read. And that's the true test of my value judgment here. There is some sophistication in the midtone, but I'm going to do my best to just ignore it and try to really focus on. really important, what's grouped together, what's clearly separated. Okay, and already I do feel a bit of a read. Okay, and this is my little abstract study. Of course, my shapes are very rushed and ugly, but there is something there. You can see a figure here, you can kind of sense something here. Of course, all I really need to do is clean up my shapes. My shapes, like I said, I'm rushing for the sake of this video, but it's there. And the design is, you know, as, as true to the original as I could in the time that I have uh, rushing the drawing, which I don't recommend, of course. I'm going to say it again, if you're doing this at home, don't rush. You know, because you see me do it, see me rushing to try to get it done for a video. And yeah, I do it in five minutes doesn't mean you should spend five minutes on it. You should probably spend 50 minutes on it and really honor the drawing. It's one, one thing I always say and advise is to respect the original, honor the original. If you're going to do a copy, if you can do a study, try your best to respect the integrity of the original piece. You know, the original piece was crafted with expert skill and care. So if you try, even though you you know, we, you know, not, not all of us can be historically great painters like Caravaggio, but you try, you try. And that's um, in the process. That's how you can get on the path or move towards being historically great yourself or being a better version of wherever you are. And if you have figures, I always say treat the figures like they're models. So uh, if you're doing a master copy and they have realistic figures, try to imagine that those are, you're not doing a master copy, you're doing a life drawing, you're sitting in front of a model. So that will also help you to keep your shapes and your uh, drawing portions uh, in check. Okay, so I think this is pretty good representation, you know, very quick and dirty and... <laughs> But the essence is there, the simplified grouping, dark, dark mass, mid-tone mass, and a few accents of light, which are also very close together and very grouped. So I think this is a successful little abstract study here, or value grouping study. Our next value skill is dark mass. So dark mass is something that's so critical to good composition, to good picture making. and it's not talked about enough and not understood enough. The first person who um, introduced me to the idea of dark mass was Steve Houston. You know, he's the first person to introduce me to the idea of tonal composition. And um, exploring dark mass led me to Dean Cornwell, who clearly is a master of it. And this example here, you can see that the obvious dark shapes of the central figure, this, the focal points, this couple here, the woman and the man who is not having a good day, both wearing dark, 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 dark clothing. Both have dark, dark hair. I mean, she is literally black. She looks very, very black, like black paint out of a tube. What was used most likely here, this is most likely a black tube paint. Mick will mix with probably umber, burnt umber underneath, but then black on top to give her that jet black, 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 blackness, which is very punchy and strong in a painting especially when you contrast it with bright whites, bright lights. Look at that. Outstanding. But anyway, so they are the dark mass. And do they group with other darks in the painting? Do these figures in dark fabric, do they group with the other darks in the painting? Of course they do. Look at the ground. Although the ground has some nuance to it, it has some subtly not black, basically, <laughs> It's still pretty, pretty dang dark, right? If you squint, 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 the ground just merges into a black shape and the black shape of the ground merges with the black fabric of our characters. What else? 
what else do you see is is masked with the darks of course the wonderful furniture here it's beautiful the wood of the furniture so just outstanding dark mass and then of course these little dark accents here now i just said earlier that all darks should touch in a way now of course there are exceptions to the rule and it can be done correctly if done with care so this is an example where these darks don't touch you see that they clearly don't touch but they're still quite effective as part of the composition because they're strategically placed and they're, they're strategic size they're very low significance but because he chose to make them black or very dark 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 they really pop off the wall so that in a way it's a compositional counterbalance tool and uh, this one happens to fall on the right third so it is a it is basically a compositional tool so that's an exception to the rule so let's take a look at this beautiful dark mass and that, that's all we're going to do is we're going to try to try to do a study and copy and understand dark massing okay i drew my little frame we're going to try to draw the characters here i saw this piece in person it's quite large i'm so grateful i saw it in person it's outstanding. When you see it as a JPEG on your computer, it's outstanding, right? When you see it in person, you just, it's kind of sucks you in. You know, it's literally a, it brings you into their world. And uh, wow, it's so dramatic. I mean, the, the expressions alone are dramatic, but the placement is dramatic. Notice they're in the corner. So I talk about corner placement all the time, well, placement in general something I cover in my composition program is understanding the psychological importance of placement. So they're in a corner. So they're literally cornered. In American English, the term cornered is generally a negative term, an uncomfortable place. So it's making us uncomfortable. And so is their face. And so is this kind of creepy dark mass and this kind of creepy dark lighting, you know? So it's just wonderful expert craftsmanship and skill on display here. That's the thing that impresses me about Dean Cornwell, especially when you see it in person, is just the incredible craftsmanship. You can see that everything is crafted with care and precision. The drawing is crafted with care. The brush marks are incredibly well crafted well placed well designed and it's uh you know nothing is an accident in his work and that is what i love very purposeful and deliberate and skillful and also at the same time emotionally dramatic and moving stimulating to the emotion so he hits you with technical brilliance and and narrative storytelling emotional impact drama mood so that is that is wonderful that's why he is the dean that's why he is remembered in history and will continue to be remembered in history along with uh, his contemporaries and his teacher the great pile little frame a little bit i think my chair is a little too wide yeah a little too wide On this table here, there's an interesting detail. You see that long stick right here on the table? This looks like a mall stick, M-A-H-L, a stick that painters use. So this looks like a canvas and a mall stick. I wonder if that was deliberate. There he is. Okay, I got my drawing pretty refined. I'm pretty happy with it. Now I'm just going to go and fill in the dark mass. Starting with what's obvious, obviously the uh, female figure, her hair and her dress is clearly the blackest 
that is some black I, I don't know if it's the photo or the reproduction the jpeg i don't know if in real life i don't remember how black that was straight ivory black out of the tube almost but i know this ivory black could be green or it could be another black little bit greenish my black here is on a layer in photoshop and i decided to lower the opacity so i can see my line drawing a little bit better Every time I look at Dean Cornwell, I learn something new. I appreciate something. I will try a dark mass painting. <laughs> That's obviously designed to be a dark mass. And isn't it wonderful that... Um, Remember what what I said about earlier how if you design your values and your shapes well or engagement of the audience because then the, the viewer, the audience are forced forced to add details, drawing, you forcing the viewer to engage with your work. And um, one great example is the legs of the female figure. Comment below. Do you see the legs of the female figure? Comment below. Does the female figure have legs? She have legs, two legs, two knees, <laughs> two thighs, two feet. Comment below, does the female figure have legs? Do you see them? Do you see the legs? Oh, that was a trick question. Of course, the legs aren't there. <laughs> There's no legs there, but you draw legs there. I draw a knee. I draw two knees at least. Maybe her feet are hidden. I don't need to draw the feet, but I can clearly, in my mind's eye, I clearly can see her thighs and at least the front of her knee. Why? <laughs> because I'm drawing it for him. <laughs> and that is, that is beautiful. That is exactly something that we want in our work. The amateur tells, the expert suggests. Amateur tells, the expert suggests. So suggesting detail is a master skill. A master skill. It is something that all the great artists that you love and admire, that are historically great, they all do this. And they do it because, just like what we saw here, allows for the viewer to add something of their own into their work. It engages the viewer. It brings them into your work. It forces them to engage with you. It forces them to look at your picture and stop and pause and think. And that's what we want. That's my, you know, one of my core philosophies is to attention and keep attention one way to do that is by masterfully designing your shapes and your values so that the viewer is forced to suggest detail for you and that's a clear example here i mean you could argue that she doesn't even have a torso or a shoulder or a right arm she doesn't have right her right arm is hidden but your mind's eye knows it's there <laughs> at least you know deep, deep part of your mind knows it's there 
and she does have some small detail shapes, but uh, in her face, I don't want to draw those now. I have to zoom in, which I don't want to do. I don't want a sloppy facial expression because it's a huge part of the composition is her facial expression. So you can see, wow, 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 wow. Let me turn on the dark. So you can see the finished dark mass. It's fairly close to the original. And even in my little five minute dark mass study, we can see figures. I see a chair. I see figures. I see pictures on the wall. I see a table. And that is because I copied the design of the great Dean Cornwell, of a great designer. So now, guess what? This design is locked in my visual library now. Now when I need to paint two figures in a room, I can have this design in my visual library and I can call upon it. So again, another reason why master copies are such a wonderful exercise, especially for composition. So the great Dean Cornwell here, the master of dark massing, and this is something that we should definitely do in our own work. Our final skill is shape design, abstract design, the ability to turn value shapes and design them, compose them, arrange them in a way so that they communicate something and of course as realists we want our shapes to communicate real things people faces anatomy still life objects and in this case landscape thingies landscape objects mountains trees houses whatever whatever you like to paint and um, james reynolds is an american artist who is a clear clear master of this let's explore this glorious painting of his here here I made a, um, just a quick and dirty, using some Photoshop filters, made a very simplified black and white version of it, just to prove a point. And actually, I almost didn't need to do this because the original is so, it's not too colorful at all. It's quite gray. The blue is very nice and vibrant. But as you can see, really, we have a dark mass, a dark shape, right? Dark mass here, the mountains and the trees. That's a dark mass. And then, of course, this obvious dark mass in the foreground. And then we have a light mass, the uh, sky, the snow, very abstract shape, little tiny little abstract shape of snow here, little tiny abstract shape of snow. And then everything else is basically mid-tone, gray. Of course, there's some nuances to the gray. Some gray slightly darker than the other. But in general, the foreground is gray. The background, midground is gray. And the mountain way back here is gray, uh, the face of it, not, not the top. So really, this is quite an abstract pattern. To me, it's an abstract design but to the human eye to the layperson it's a realistic landscape it's trees mountain mountain right snow trees mountain snow trees bushes mountain why why what how, how did how does he accomplish that well it's abstract value shapes and using value shapes that people recognize and understand example then you do something like this in a drawing <laughs> when you do something like that, when you put a bunch of triangles like that, that kind of size in, in that part of the canvas, generally what does the viewer, what does this imply? What does the viewer do for you? The viewer will immediately draw mountains for you. So you, don't, you can basically do whatever you want. As long as it's kind of the right value and color relative to the other colors, then the viewer will draw it for you, right? When you have a big rectangular light blue or blue mass at the top the drawer will draw a sky and then you put triangles in front of a blue mass the viewer will draw a mountain for you what else he does something very beautiful and clever in terms of shape design here and that is the tree look at this tree it's basically a dark mass right there's no leaves remember 
he doesn't draw individual leaves. He's suggesting leaves. How does he make you draw a tree? Well, this shape look familiar to you? Anybody recognize this shape? When you see a dark kind of greenish thing in this shape, what do you think? Of course, you think tree, especially those who celebrate Christmas. Comment below if you have ever had a Christmas tree. I did as a, as a kid. My mom was a big Christmas person. Every Christmas, she brought out the big old tree, and it was shaped exactly like this, and just as dark as this, a dark green in this mass. So instantly, the viewer goes, oh, I've seen that with my own eyes in my own life. That is a tree. As he did that, he made the shape in this way and put it in this setting or this imagine or this setting that you imagine it to be. Your mind instantly thinks, oh, I see a sky. I see mountain. Therefore, <laughs> this must be a tree. <laughs> but it's, we know it's not. It's a dark shape. And then he even goes one step further and does this. So this is, again, brilliant shape design that we should all copy and learn, and we will. Look at what he does here. Boom, boom, boom. He breaks it up into a shape that we recognize. Now, it definitely looks like a Christmas tree, right? We can all draw a Christmas tree from imagination, and it's pretty close to this. So this breaking up of the hard triangle is enough to both help you feel more like it's a realistic tree, realistic scene, and it suggests detail. It suggests branches and leaves. So let's take a look at James Reynolds now. I'm going to do my best to try to draw this scene. Oh, my goodness. I may not succeed. This scene does have some really nice design to it. I have to kind of uh, respect the design. The design, meaning the placement of these mountains, the angle of these mountains, the placement is most important. If I'm off in my study, it won't will look kind of bad. There is um, some precision. This design, I don't know for a fact, but I can almost 100% am sure that he didn't just sit down and copy what he saw. Most likely, photo, or he sat down and started it in real life and then went into the studio, took it back to the studio and refined the design because there is some there is some conscious conscious design choices that i can see that are being made specifically the angles and the placement so i know i need to honor so i got to try to be a little little bit slower and careful for example this that tree that main focal point tree i can almost guarantee that 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 was designed he probably didn't see the tree like that. The tree wasn't like that in real life. So that's a big thing that I got to get right, which I already kind of screwed up. You see, as long as I have kind of that triangular shape, it will read like trees. The viewer will draw trees. Doing this exercise now reminds me of Molly Bang book, Picture This, where she draws a forest with paper cutouts. The illustrations in that book is done with paper cutouts, and they're all... Um, the trees that she draws are all Christmas tree triangle looking things. Okay, so I'm going to start with what's obvious and clearly what's the star of this painting is this tree is the main thing, the main focal point thing. Block it in and try to do my best to respect the detail, at least the shape. I do all the beautiful brushwork that he did. I can, uh, it's shape as close as I can get it. My tools here and the time I have.
just this tree alone with this triangular shape, it already feels like a landscape. Just by these beautiful dark shapes. And notice the massing here. You see this little line? I just saw that. You see that little line right here? Right here. Right here, right here, right here. That little line unifies these trees. See that? <laughs> I'm exaggerating it here. That little line I'm drawing right now, you see it? Do, 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 do. Right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. Right here, right here, right here. That is dark massing right there. So great James Reynolds understands <laughs> that the master composers should, for good composition, should group the darks as much as possible. Mask the darks, make sure they kind of touch if possible, and he does that here. Notice here's an abstraction. Here's a shape design technique right here. It's right here. You see it right here, right here. See where my arrow is? Right here. Those one, two, three strokes force the viewer to draw a tree. The viewer is like, oh, okay, I, I, it's a tree. Because <laughs> that's a little, uh, the trunk of the tree. That is another example of abstract shape design using in a shape that the viewer expects to communicate oops communicate what you want to communicate in this case a tree in mid ground or a tree trees and notice okay we have a little straggling shape notice this little nugget right there you see it right there where my cursor is? See my cursor? Cursor, 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 right there. That little nugget right here. Do, 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 do. That's doing exactly what is happening here. That is a nugget that unifies the darks. So I'm gonna I'm gonna exaggerate it on my study right there. See that? That, my friends, is deliberate, masterful composition design. So you should definitely do that in your own work. <laughs> Find sneaky little ways to group the darks. Christmas tree in the foreground, Christmas tree in the far foreground, some stuff which is probably trees and forest and bushes and things. There you go. Oh, I'm going to merge all of this together, so I just do that for nothing. But that's okay. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to group it together. So here. These shapes, I need some precision, so they're not going to look like the original design. It would if I had more time. And there you go. This background thing is part of the dark mass, believe it or not. Yeah, it's pretty dark. Dark is a tree, but it is close enough for it to be a dark shape, dark part of his design. These little bushes or whatever they are in light, they are really dark, actually. Part of the dark mass, believe it or not. And um, I think that's about it. That's about it. Okay. Let me add the lights now. What's obviously bright? The snow here on the side of this mountain. Right? The snow, clearly bright. And I'm also going to group the sky and the snow, including the top 
the snow top of the mountain, including the snow top that's in shadow, which is not white, it's kind of a bluish light gray, it's still quite, 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 quite bright. It's not as bright as the snow on the ground, it's not even as bright as the sky, but it does group. What's happening, what you are seeing really is a temperature difference, color difference. That's why this appears so much darker, but it's not. It's a different temperature. It's more of a purpley, it's more of a purple blue gray. This is a greeny blue, a light greeny blue. So the yellows in here separate with the purples here. The yellows in this blue green separate with the purples in this mountain thingy. And then um, I have to try to respect his drawing of the mountain as best I can. I am not a mountain <laughs> drawer person. Oh, boy. These shapes also help to suggest snow. So already I have a scene. I copied James Reynolds' design as best as I could, and I already feel a scene. Let's take it one step further here and add the mid-tone, which are a bit darker than the paper that we have underneath here. You see, because of the abstract shape design of the light, it feels like a mountain. Abstract shape design of the darks makes them feel like trees, foliage. This abstract shape of the light on the mountain makes it feel like snow. Okay, so I got the uh, midtones tucked in, and this is a pretty good stopping point here. I think um, it clearly feels James Reynolds do that. He designed that consciously, and the beautiful clarity of the simplified values. And the simple abstract shapes, just like we talked about. The tree is really just a triangular blob, <laughs> a long triangular creature shape that put a little little bit little bit of rough edges on the side, and boom, you got a tree. Same with the mountains here. So this is a great example of how simplified value shapes designed correctly, in this case, much more abstract at first glance, much more abstract than what the layperson would, would see, allows the viewer to fill in the details for us, allows the viewer to draw the whole mountain landscape scene for us. So that is what we want. We want our viewer to be engaged. At the end of the day, we all want the same thing. Whether you're a realist, illustrator, you're a digital artist, you're a 3D sculptor, whatever, we all want the same thing. We want our work to be seen and appreciated. We want people to see our work and go, wow, I feel something about your work. I, I connect to your work. This is an age-old method of doing that, is by carefully designing your shapes and carefully suggesting detail to allow the viewer to fill in the rest for you. So that's something we should all strive for here, and this is a great example of it.